<laughs> There's some people way out there screaming. That's awesome. Well, thanks for returning. That's really good news. We are um, talking about saying yes to the Lord this week. And this is our deep faith conference where we're asking the Lord to take us uh, to new levels of intimacy with Him. You, you might remember if you are here this morning, I talked about how our call is actually to become more dependent on the Lord, not more independent. And so we want to be people who, no matter where we are, uh, no matter who we're with, we're ready to say yes to the Lord. And I truly believe that our greatest adventures are going to be found when we say yes to the Lord and His calling. And the th subject I want to talk to you about tonight is possibly one of the most important subjects we could talk about, and that's prayer. And um, I, want to, I want to share in vulnerability with you tonight uh, some stories, uh, some things that the Lord has been asking of me. I want to invite you into a time where we actually pray together. And so in a little while, I'm actually going to invite you just to shout some prayers out. So if you're uncomfortable by that, it's dark and it's okay. It's going to be okay, all right? You're 10 feet separated from the next person, so it's going to be okay. But I just sense that the Lord is going to hear our prayers tonight. What if I were to tell you there's a God out there who's all-powerful, who, who knit you together, who knows you better than any person on this planet, who loves you more than any person on this planet? What if I were to tell you that this God would hear your prayers tonight? Would you shout him out? What if I were to tell you that this God is, is able to do immeasurably more than you could ever think or imagine? Would you shout out your prayers? And so tonight, kind of in the dark sky here, in just a moment, I'm going to invite us. What's the Lord tugging on your heart? If, if the Lord needed to move in one area, what would you call on him to move in? Let's be people who boldly go before the Lord and, and call on him. And so we're going we're gonna to talk tonight about saying yes to prayer. In, in the spirit of vulnerability, I want to start by talking and telling you how I met my wife, Becca. I wish she was here because she's amazing. Well, the first time I met Becca, I was enamored by her, head over heels in love with her. All the oohs can happen right now. Okay, thank you. The guy's like, uh. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Uh, <laughs> head over heels. I met Becca where all romances begin, Applebee's. And we met there, and uh, we were eating. And I remember she was wearing overalls and a white long sleeve shirt, and she had her hair up, and she looked beautiful. And I remember that. Uh, little did I know that she didn't remember meeting me that night, but things would get better. From that moment on, I, I tried to, you know, hang out with her and her friend group as much as possible and tried to secure alone time with her whenever I could. And I, I began to really like her and I wanted her to know that. And so I got her a gift, a, a, a CD. I don't know if you know what that is, but it's an ancient way of playing music. And I got her this, this compact disc and I gave it to her. And she knocked on the door, and I, I opened the door, and she said, you know what, Brian, I've been thinking about this a lot, and can we just be friends? What? Which isn't a question, by the way, guys. It's not a question. It sounds like a question. It's a statement. Can we just be friends? And I don't know where I, I, I got the courage to say this back to her, but I said, I have enough friends. Thank you very much. I knew I'd get the guys here somewhere. Thank you. Thank, oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Out of all the things to applaud for. Thank you very much. Um, I already have enough friends. And um, she closed the door. She left. I'm pretty sure I cried. <laughs> but it was true. I had enough friends. I didn't want another friend. I didn't want her, you know, just to be a friend. I wanted much more than that. I wanted something deeper. I wanted greater intimacy. I wanted something that would go beyond my friendships with her. I didn't want just another friend. You know, friends, when it comes to our relationship with Jesus, he's not asking us to put him in our friend group. He's not asking us, hey, can we just be friends? 
No, our Jesus wants a much deeper relationship than that. He wants something way more intimate than that. He wants you to know him at deeper levels than that. I I love how you call this deep faith. That, you know, we want to go into deeper waters. We want to know the Lord even more and more and more. He's not calling you just to be a friend. He's calling you to be a follower. He's calling you to make him the Lord of your life. I love this about our God is that he's, he's calling us into deeper waters. I'm reminded how one of the disciples went to Jesus while he was praying, and he said, Jesus, Lord, teach us to pray, which was an interesting statement because these would have been people who knew how to pray. They prayed on the hour and throughout the day, and they knew how to pray. They knew what it sounded like. They probably were people of prayer, but they saw something so different in what Jesus had with his father. It was a different kind of connection. It was a different kind of intimacy. It was something they had never experienced before. And so they come to Jesus, they say, listen, listen, I know how to say the words. I know when I'm supposed to pray. I know kind of how to do it. But what you have is something different. Teach us that. We want that kind of access. We want that level of intimacy and fellowship with God. Teach us to pray. I want us to come in that kind of posture tonight as we listen. Jesus, would you teach us to pray? Would you take us to deeper levels in our intimacy with you? Here's what I want to do tonight. is I want to talk to you about saying yes to prayer. And then I want to challenge you to something that I believe if you say yes to this challenge, it will change your life forever. So that will keep you around for the rest of the talk. <laughs> what does it mean to say yes to prayer? Four quick things. Saying yes to prayer is saying yes to the revelation of God in your life. You know, prayer is God's chosen way to to speak to us, to give us wisdom and guidance. It's God's chosen way for us to speak to him. And saying yes to prayer means saying yes to the revelation of God. So often it's in the posture of prayer that God reveals more of who he is to us. You might remember if you're here this morning, I talked about how we are not alone. This is a promise. You are not alone, that God is with us. His presence is with us. One way that I think about prayer is this way. You know, when I go to a concert, one of the things I really love is the concert lights. And the lights are vibrant and they're colors and you can see the beams. And one thing I I found out later on was that the way that you see the beams and the way that you see the colors is that they release haze or fog into the room. Without the haze, without the fog, you can't see the the distinction between the colors and the, and the, and the, the beams of the light. It comes alive with the haze and the fog released in the room. Now, without the haze and fog, the light is still in the room, but you don't see it until the haze is released. This is what prayer is. God is here. He's here. Just like the light, it's, it's here. But when we pray, it's like releasing haze or fog into the room. And we get to see the, the vibrancy of the, of the colors of God, the beauty of God. We get to see the distinction of the beams, his power, his might, his wisdom. When we pray, we release haze into the room. When I thought about it that way, I thought, man, prayer is exciting. You know, a lot of times we think, oh, there's a prayer meeting. Man, boring. (laughs) What are we going to do? We're just going to be silent and on our knees and this kind of thing. No, prayer is exciting when you think about the presence of God is with us. And when we engage in prayer and we take the posture of prayer, we get to meet the Almighty God. He speaks to us. He transforms us. When we say yes to prayer, we say yes to the revelation of of God. I love how Jesus describes himself in John chapter 10. He says he's the good shepherd. And then he says this about his sheep, which is us, the disciples, his disciples, his followers. He says, my sheep listen to my voice. Do you know what that implies? That implies that when we meet with our good shepherd, he speaks to us. We get to hear from him. Wow. Is there anyone else on this planet that you'd rather hear from than God? In the posture of prayer, we get to hear from God. What an amazing, amazing blessing. Now, praying can be like learning to walk. 
You might wobble at first, but as you practice, it's a discipline. As you practice, you become stronger as you go along. And God, he speaks to us in in many ways. We should seek his face, seek his voice, listen to him. He speaks to us through dreams. He speaks to us through trusted friends. He speaks to us through the circumstances of life. He speaks to us through the promptings of our heart. And how do we hear the voice of God? Well, we intentionally set time apart in our schedule as we meet with him. We find a quiet place or we go for a walk through his creation. We open his word. We ask him to speak to us. We invite others into our life that can help us discern the voice of God. And we move out in faith. You know, I've found that God speaks to me clearest when I'm stepping out in faith for him. A lot of times I think we toil and we say, oh God, what are you saying? What are you saying? What are you wanting of me? I can tell you what God wants of us. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. And to love your neighbor as yourself. Go and do this. And while you're in motion, God's going to speak to you. I love that as we pray, we receive a revelation of the Lord. I wonder, are you hearing from God? Do you hear from him? Second thing I want to say is this, is that saying yes to prayer is saying yes to receiving the call of God. You know, it's in a posture of prayer where God calls us to things. In the book of Acts chapter 10, there's a great story of this man named Cornelius, who's a Gentile, and Peter, who's a Jew. Both of them receive a vision from the Lord. Cornelius from an angel. The angel says, hey, I want you to go and send some of your people to go and fetch this man named Peter. Simon Peter, he's in Joppa, bring him back here. Peter, the next day, receives a vision from the Lord. It's a bit of a bizarre vision that it takes him a while to understand what's happening there. But the Lord tells him that people are coming to get him, to go with them. And Peter goes, and he walks into the home of Cornelius, which was absolutely breaking all the laws. A Jew going into a Gentile's home. He breaks the threshold He's stepping into a new thing that God is doing. And there he he receives this revelation that God doesn't show any favoritism. All he's looking is for those who will follow him and do what's right. Now here's the thing about prayer. Both of these men, Peter and Cornelius, receive their calling in prayer. Cornelius at 3 p.m. is in prayer. He's most likely praying when the angel of the Lord comes. Peter is on his rooftop praying at noon when he receives a vision from the Lord. It's through this posture of prayer where God calls them. When you go and pray, expect that God's going to call you to things. This is where you receive your greatest assignments in a posture of prayer. Third, Saying yes to prayer is saying yes to the power of God. I want to tell you a quick story about Susan. Just about a month ago, Susan came to our church service, and um, this was kind of her her last shot. She had been dealing with an eye issue where she couldn't see out of one of her eye because it was constantly weeping. And um, she just went to all kinds of doctors, and nobody could help her. They just basically said, you're going to have to deal with this. And so Susan, having been grown up in the church, but she left it for many years, decided that she'd come to church. After our services, we offer prayer for people. And Susan came up to one of our prayer servants. She said, listen, I don't know if this is going to work, but it's my, my last hope. I've got this issue. I'd love for you to pray for me. Let's just see what happens. The prayer servant invited me into this, and we got to pray for Susan. We prayed, you know, Lord, would you come and would you heal her? I specifically prayed, Lord, would you make yourself known to her? She opened her eye, and it stopped weeping. She was completely healed. Then she started crying, (laughs) which I found ironic. (laughs) But then she said, what just happened? And I said, I think the Lord wanted you to know that he's here, that he's able, and that he loves you. And she gave her life back to Jesus which I actually think is the the bigger miracle. See, through prayer, 
God moves in power. Don't those stories just make you want to pray for people? God, he moves. Fourth, saying yes to prayer is saying yes to a way of life. Prayer is not an activity. It's not a thing you go to. It's a way of life. Uh, When you say yes to prayer, you're saying yes to a relationship, not a hobby. Uh, It's God's chosen way. It's not just a liturgy. It's living. We, as we breathe, we speak to the Lord. We walk with him in our daily life. I sincerely believe that God's calling us to walk with him, to speak with him throughout our day. It's almost like the Lord saying, this is the way that I want to meet with you. Talk with me. Speak to me. Pray. On one vacation, I took the girls on, uh, to mini golf. I have four daughters, if you didn't know that. And we went mini golfing, and we came to this one hole, and it was an octopus. So it had these eight limbs, and, and I quickly discovered which limb to hit it into so that it would go and become a hole in one. And so I told the girls, hey, listen, hit it here, in this one right here, and it will go in the hole. And they kept missing got to be honest with you, I'm a very competitive person, so I was keeping score, so I tallied every one of their strokes, by the way. And I said, listen, what's going on? I was getting frustrated that they weren't weren't even hitting it close to the one that I was pointing to. Finally, I figured out that they were just messing with me and hitting it over there because they knew it was bugging me. But I kept saying, just hit it here, and it will go in. I feel like the Lord sometimes, he's looking at us, and maybe he's wanting to look at us right now, saying, listen, if you hit it here, it will go in. If you want to meet with me, if you want to hear my voice, then set time aside and meet with me. Pray. Get down on your knees. Walk through creation. Speak with me, and I'll meet you there. Hit it here, and it will go in. You know, I want to share, as I close, some questions that the Lord's been asking of me. Um, This is a moment of vulnerability here. Even though this is going online, I'm sure there's millions of viewers right now. Millions, right? I'm sure. All the alumni are right in right now. Hi, hi, alumni. Give donations to Gordon. These students need your help. Okay? Okay, two claps tonight. <laughs> one on donations and, and one on I have enough friends. Which, by the way, I don't have enough friends right now. Anyway, here we go. Oh, okay. Um, where was I? I want to share some questions that the Lord's been asking of me. Maybe he he wants to ask them of you too in saying yes to prayer. The first question was this. Brian, do you believe that I'm real? It's a funny question, right? I'm a pastor. (laughs) Yeah, of course, Lord, I believe you're real. Now, as I thought about that, I was like, you know, imagine if, if you were with me the whole day. Wouldn't it be odd if I never spoke to you? just kind of avoided you the whole day, but you're just there with me and just kind of walking through life. And I just, I never acknowledged your presence. Just kind of did everything on my own without consulting you, without asking for your advice or wisdom or help. Wouldn't that be really odd? And I felt the Lord saying, Brian, you do that with me too many days of the year. Do you believe that I am real? If you believe that I'm real, then talk to me. If you believe that I'm real, then consult me. Bring me into your life. Ask me for wisdom. Second question. And in just a moment, I'm going to ask us to to shout out our prayers before the Lord. So prepare for that moment. The second question I felt the Lord asked me is this, Brian, do you trust that I am able? Do you trust that I'm able? You know, I think I used to pray as if I were trying not to disturb God. (laughs) <laughs> it's kind of these prayers like, oh, hey, God, I'm just com- I'm sorry to bother you here, but, um, you know, bless the meal. Thanks. Sorry to bother you. I know there are other people with more important things. I'll just get out of your way. You know, just kind of these quick prayers. Just say, hey, I'm, oh, I'm really sorry, kind of real hesitant. Oh, I, I hate to ask you of this, Dad, but, oh, you know, uh, okay, you know what? Never mind. There's some other stuff going on. And um, as I was studying Scripture, I, I just see the people praying powerful prayers. They're They go into the throne room of God. They go into his presence with great boldness. And I I was like, where's that in my life? I think of a story like Peter when he's in prison in Acts 12. And it says, so Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. 
I wonder what those prayers sounded like. Oh, hey, God, oh, I'm, God, I'm sorry. We're sorry to bug you. We just wanted to pop in here real quick and just say, you know, could you comfort Peter in his long stay in prison? Okay, sorry about that. You know, let us just kind of get out of here. I know you got more important things to do. Now, I don't think that's how those prayers sounded. I, I think I'm guessing those prayers are more like, hey, Lord, we're here in your presence. You've called us to, to speak to you and ask for bold things. And so, Lord, our brother Peter's in prison. We want to see him released. Lord, would you release him? Lord, for your glory, would you release him in such a powerful way that, that all knees bow before you? Lord, come and do it. And this challenged me. God was pushing me to trust that he's able to do immeasurably more than I could ever think or imagine. I began to pray bold prayers. Not foolish prayers, not ungrounded prayers, not wishful thinking prayers, but accurate prayers. Prayers that recognize the power and the might of the one who I'm praying to. I wonder, friends, there's a lot to pray for in our world right now. Are you praying or are you just posting? Yeah, I didn't write that down. Are we praying or are we just posting? You see, we're called to be the people who pray. We actually have the answer. His name is Jesus. If we want to see a healed world, it comes through Jesus. And we know him. That's what we have to offer. That's what, why we're the church. That's why we're the family of God. Because we've been saved, we've been redeemed. We've been invited in as the children of God. We have a father who listens to us, who hears our voices. I wonder, friends, what do you want to pray for? What is tugging at your heart right now? And do you believe God is able? Maybe it's an illness that you have or a friend has or a family member has. Maybe it's injustice in this world. Maybe it's division that's happening even on this campus. I don't know. Maybe it's a friendship that's been wounded. What is tugging on your heart? And do you believe that the God you love and serve is able to intervene? And have you prayed? I'm going to ask you to change your posture right now. I'm going to ask you to stand up. I'm going to get you halfway there. <laughs> and I'm going to ask us to shout out our prayers. This might be uncomfortable, but listen, it's dark. People might not know it's you. That's okay. Just before you and, and, and your God, what's on your heart? What, what do you want to shout out for, for God? What do, you, what do you want to believe that he's able for? And I'm just going to leave it open. It could be all of you yell something. It might be one. It doesn't really matter. But let's call out. Let's shout out those things that are tugging on our heart right now. Some people might yell over one another. That's okay. God can hear it all at once. Not a problem. Okay? So go whenever you're ready. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 Lord, we thank you. Lord, we come before you boldly. Lord, we do pray for revival. Lord, we pray for the release of anxiety. Lord, we pray for justice. We pray that there might be work and friendship and brotherhood and sisterhood on this campus that would reflect your son, Jesus Christ, to the world. Lord, I pray that you would root out anything that doesn't look like Jesus. And that you might plant and, and cast seeds that would bring great fruit for your kingdom within this group of young adults. And Lord, I pray this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You can have a seat. You can have a seat. Just a couple more things for you, if that's okay. Just a couple more things. A couple more questions the Lord's been asking me, and then we'll close. The next one. I felt the Lord asking me is, Brian, will you continue to pray when things aren't changing? It's a tough question. God's taught me to persevere in prayer. Let's be a persevering prayer, people, huh? The next question the Lord's asked me is, Brian, will you continue to pray 
even when things don't go the way you wanted? It's a tough question. You know, as a pastor, I've prayed for a lot of things. And to be honest with you, sometimes things don't work out the way I would have liked them to. I've prayed for people to be healed of cancer and they've, they've passed to go with the Lord. These are tough things. But the Lord, I think, in asking this question was, he was asking me, Brian, are you going to stand with me no matter what? And then the final question is this, and then I want to give a challenge to you that I think if you take me up on this challenge, it'll transform your life. This next question the Lord asked me was very practical. He asked, Brian, will you be intentional about your times of prayer? This was the Lord calling me out, saying, Brian, stop just talking about praying. Actually pray. Be intentional about it. Friends, I want to challenge you to a couple things. First thing is this, is tomorrow night we're going to be talking about saying yes to compassion. I actually believe that many of the things that are happening in our world right now, they're combated if the people of God choose compassion. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to have a time to pray for one another. Some of the faculty is going to be here to pray for you. I want to encourage you to bring your prayer, bring your burden tomorrow night so that we can pray for you. But also, I want to challenge you to be in prayer leading up to tomorrow night. And I want to challenge you to ask the Lord, Lord, do you have anything for me to share with somebody else, to encourage them? This isn't a time to go around and say, hey, I've been looking for a time to tell you that I don't really like the shoes you wear, or, you know, I don't like how you say this or that. No, it's, we're looking for words of encouragement. If they don't leave encouraged, you've done it wrong, <laughs> okay? Be in prayer between now and tomorrow night, asking the Lord, Lord, is there something that you'd give me, a word you'd give me, a scripture verse you'd give me to share with somebody else that might be a lifeline to them in this season? And here's the challenge that I believe will change your life if you choose to accept it. At our church, we have a thing called the first 20. We challenge our whole church to take the first 20 minutes of their day. I usually say the first best 20 minutes of your day and spend it with Jesus. I truly believe that if we get up early in the morning and we spend time with Jesus, we'll go out into our day filled. Usually when I miss this in the morning, I go to the Lord later on in the day. It's usually praying for recovery, not refreshment. <laughs> Jesus, help me. I, I went without being filled. I want to challenge you to take this seriously. Maybe for a college student, it looks a little different. Maybe it's an evening. The time doesn't necessarily matter, but... I'd suggest the morning if you can do it, to rise up before your first class, rise up before the first thing that you do, and take at least 20 minutes and give it to Jesus. Spend time in his word. Ask him to convict you on the things that you need convicting, to call you to the things he wants to call you to. And I believe that if you do that, the Lord will transform your life in amazing ways. Let's stand again, and, and I'll pray for us, and then, and then we can head out. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm really looking forward to tomorrow night to talk about compassion. Uh, let everybody know that that's what we're talking about. I think um, compassion is going to be the answer, uh, the church's response to injustice in our world. I think compassion is going to be the answer to the division even that we find in the church, uh, maybe even in our friendships here. If we choose compassion, uh, the Lord's going to do great things. And so it's going to be an important message tomorrow night. But let me pray for you as you go. Lord, I thank you for my friends here. I pray that um, we would be people of prayer, that we would meet with you, that we'd talk with you throughout the day. Lord, that we'd see you move in our lives. And Lord, that we'd grow in deeper intimacy with you through this treasure of a gift that you've given us called prayer. And so Lord, I pray that we would say yes to prayer. And I pray this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you uh, tomorrow night at 8 o'clock, same time.